and I can say with my whole heart that, that this was the most painful thing I have ever done in a video game ever. So that was a lie. Speaking to my past self, I can now say I've done something much much worse. This challenge being suggested by Casual Loop. Thank you for the suggestion and the pain I experienced. But this being for you, the viewer's entertainment, I ask the question, can you beat Fallout 4 with every disease? I will start by saying I did attempt to find a mod or any console commands that would help me add the diseases to the game. But sadly, I couldn't find anything. So for this run, I decided I would manually get all the diseases. But I will get into that later. Beginning in Sanctuary, once again, I made the man, the myth, the disease, Infecto. Greeting Codsurf, I awaited the arrival of the demon. I spoke with him, but will wait until the vault exit to discuss my stats as I changed them there. Being informed by the newsman that the world was about to end, I booked it to the vault, where me and my whole family became frozen TV dinners once again. A strange breakfast cereal man killed my wife, and I rose from the freezer with a purpose in the world to become my dream, to become Infecto Man. I stole my wife's wedding ring, for the spare change, grabbed the baton and began swinging. Eventually, reaching the elevator once I'd killed all the roaches, I set my stats, dropping endurance and bumping up agility, intelligence and perception. This all being worthless, however, as all the diseases, along with all the other problems in survival, made all the stats completely pointless. So with that, I began my journey with one dream to collect all the diseases in Fallout 4. Now would be a good time to discuss my game plan for getting all the diseases, and how I will go about it. The plan being that I was to collect all the diseases before starting the main story. I considered starting the main story to be helping Nick. So I saw the faction intro quests, I fair game, which comes into play later, and knowing the easiest disease I could possibly get was the Morat disease, and with the added bonus that it increases the chance to get all the other diseases, so Vault 81 was my destination for the time being. Starting my journey. I bypassed Sanctuary and headed straight for Red Rocket, where I looted up and saved. This being helpful, as not 5 seconds later, I ran over and got killed by some blood bugs. This being before I had even got a single disease, and having put a point into toughness, the run was off to a great start. Dying a second time to the poison, I took one off from a distance with a precision shot and then took down the other. Going into Concord, I picked off all the raiders from a safe, socially distanced distance away, reaping my rewards. I ignored Preston and made it over to a nice parking spot which had a mongrel, but also a nice bed. So taking care of the dog, with my newly acquired musket, I slept and was now going in my intended direction. Killing Trudy and Patrick on the way there for, for more loot from, and from there it was smooth sailing. Luckily not running into any trouble, just making sure to take care around some super mutants and I reached the vault. Rather anticlimactically however, I got to the entrance and was reminded I needed three fusion cores. And with me only having a 1 in charisma, I didn't exactly expect to get in. So, instead of running all the way back to find the cores again, I reloaded my save at the parking spot so I could collect the fusion cores on my way. Knowing the location of three fusion cores on the way to Vault 81, I went looking for them. The first being in the mole rat den under Red Rocket. The core being easy enough to get as the mole rats went down in one or two shots from my 10mm. Also having to blow the rabid one's head off, but overall it was, it was a fairly easy time. Then grabbing the fusion core from the Museum of Freedom on my way past, also selling my wife's wedding ring and other assortments for a few caps. And then may have gotten caught up in a fight between Wolfgang and Trudy. And let's say it didn't go well for me. So repeating these last two things, I walked past the Drumlin Diner this time, as I didn't exactly want to die again, marching straight towards my next fusion core. It being out in the open, as it was located in a fresh suit of power armour upon the bypass near Cambridge. Me also being followed there by a gravity defying red scorpion. Him being a reasoning for me actually using the armour, and leading to my subsequent escape. Thankfully losing him, I then went and watched Buzz Lightyear do his thing. Me also dumping the armour off there, and collecting a nice new laser rifle, and some Brotherhood Garms. With that, I watched Dance kill all the ghouls, completing the fire so support quest, which then levelled me up. I put a point in Gunslinger as I believed my 10mm would be my main gun for the time being. I ransacked the police station for everything I could find, and then I then left, and in no time at all I'd reached the vault entrance. I going to hand over the fusion cores, they let me inside. Handing them over to the overseer, I went deeper in the vault, finding Aaron, agreeing to find our cat, as at the time I thought it was what started the quest to get the Morat disease. It may have turned out that I was wrong, but for now, I found Ashes, who I spoke clear English to, in my, my I add, and somehow completely understanding me, and returned to the vault. I then walked back over to Fault and was delighted to find Cricket and her guards in a fight with a goddamn Yalgoy. 
of which I had a very close call, jumping atop a destroyed van, and I was thankfully able to finish him off, hoping that was the last of it. Yes. In the crossfire, I had managed to kill the caravan guard, leading to the upper one absolutely obliterating me. They only put me back before collecting ashes, thankfully, as I had saved after leaving the vault. So collecting the cat again, thankfully, this time the Yagwag chose not to attack and I was able to make it back to the vault. Inside is where I found out collecting ashes was not going to get me the, the quest for the Morat disease. It was in fact getting my blood taken. So getting the doctor to take some of my blood, I got the quest in motion. But before this, I did already know that I had to leave the vault and com uh, complete a quest and then come back before I could actually do the quest proper. That being why I had done the ashes quest just for getting the first part. But with that, my mind was set on a nearby task which was going to hardware town to collect some green paint for Abbott as that was the quickest way I thought I could do it. Getting out of the vault I did try to go the short way around the pond but got abused by a few bugs a fair few times which definitely showed to me just how tough survival mode actually was but getting around that by just going the long way around I snuck up on the raiders out back of hardware town and I was able to get a sneak attack on one of them which was helpful and then I just quickly sprayed until I killed the other one. Getting aside making the paint for Abbott I was able to get a sneak attack off on Demo, then quickly finishing off with a few rapid fire shots, and then being a battle of attrition with the rest of the raiders, but in due time I was able to deal with them all. Whilst taking a nap in between the gunfire, collecting my first disease, battle fatigue. Feeling the hardship of survival almost immediately, my carry weight fell to 85. I have no idea if that was anything to do with the disease, but my carry weight just decided I didn't want to work anymore. I could barely carry anything, but by having some alcohol, I was able to loot up the place. Getting out, I reached down the city. Where I contemplated shooting Piper, because I really wanted to, but choosing to wait patiently, I was given entry. Anyway, immediately handing the paint to Abbott, I stole some food, as there was actually need for it this time, and I helped Shang clear out the water for some easy money. Now being over encumbered, I waddled over to the dugout inn, dropped all my shit on the floor, bought a room, and had another little snooze. By now not being able to sprint due to my lack of sleep, as when I saved I was only sleeping for one hour, as I thought the less sleep the more chance I had of collecting my diseases. That being what I thought at least, making it back to Vault 81, I slept before entering, finding out the lack of sleep comes with the lack of body movement as I was now stuck at my slowest walking speed. This being lovely for, for what I was about to commit inside the vault. So I slowly walked my way over to the lab, playing with a cone as I did so. Reaching it, I thought, what a great idea. Let me spam the NPCs so their dialogue was go sooner. But somehow in this, I managed to steal something. And in Vault 81, this must be the highest crime imaginable, as they immediately execute me without hesitation. So repeating the walk, I got the quest to save the child, whose name I have forgotten, and no, I will not look at the footage for it. Bobby then let me into the section with the mole rats. There thankfully being a bed at the entrance, so so I had a save for me if I died. That, that coming in to play fairly soon, as there was not just mole rats, but turrets, and a protection who scared the shit out of me. I also pumped him full of rounds, finishing him off with my shotgun. The turrets went down fairly easily, just me having to enact a duck and cover strategy. I went into the mole rats, who were actually very easy to kill, only taking one shot, but uh, however I still exercised massive amounts of caution here, making sure I was bit a few times collecting the mole rat disease. Here I did think about leaving, but I thought, no I might as well complete the quest. This being my greatest idea, to continue going through the vault, that is. I did make it to the final room, but I was repaid for my stupidity, throwing a spare Molotov into the Morats further back as the broom of was scary. What I did not account for is I'm tunneling closer to me, and with my ridiculously itchy trigger finger, I let go of the Molotov right in front of my face, killing me immediately. This showed me truly what I've gotten myself into. This being so painful, in fact, this is where I left the run to go record the New Vegas explosive video, so I could actually feel some fun before returning. And then God called out to me to never give up. Never back down, never give up. With my newfound motivation, I tried once more. Also trying a new technique, being that of the haymaker, allowing me to move a little bit faster. Within five seconds, I drank a new cold of quantum to heal myself. This then making the haymaker pointless, as I found out that in the process of drinking a nuka cola, I gained caffeine, which allowed me to move faster than a snail. This being very useful to find out, as this made collecting the d diseases much easier. Collecting the disease once more, I made it to the broodmother. Then she used her own haymaker move on me, as she obliterated me in one shot. So reloading, once more, I destroyed the turrets, half the nuka cola, got the Morat disease, and this time, I used my brain, and immediately turned around and ran off escaping the vault with my newly found disease. I left the child to die, 
as he deserved it for being so stupid enough to go down there in the first place. Now with my newly found ability to run on a caffeine induced high, I ran back to Diamond C, collecting a fresh suit of armour off a guard's corpse on my way there, as he wasn't going to need it anymore. I made it to the dugout inn, stocked up on some Nicola cola and saved once more. This time, finding out if I sleep for two hours, it would allow me to jog and not take away any diseases. So from now on, that came into play. Wanting a good supply of money, also thinking chems would give me the diseases I so much desired, I started the Diamond City Blues quest. Watching Paul get beat up, I then killed him, and agreed to help Cook kill Nelson and the gang. Getting down to the waterfront, I thought yes, I will put Bottle Cap Mine right at their feet. What could go wrong? Everything. The answer is everything. I went to place the mine, accidentally, whacking Trish right in the face. That I then got opened up like a pack of salami, put me back to the inn. This not being all bad, however, just time consuming. Repeating what I had just done, this time, I played it stealthily. <laughs> Ah, oh, who am I kidding? I ran straight up to them again, this time just being a few inches further away, and the mine worked, just having to pick off the stragglers with my 10mm pistol. I then killed Trish and Cook with a well placed. <coughs> I then killed Trish and Cook with well placed Molotov, collecting all the money and the drugs for me and myself and I. Halfing some buff out so I can drag them all along with me, I made my way back to Cricket, where I bought the best gun I could see fit for the run Spray and Pray. Trust me when I say it, this helped me dearly. The only downside being, I had to sell everything I owned to Cricket. But that didn't worry me for now. Still on my quest for disease, by this point only having fatigue, parasites and the Morat disease, I continued dicking around, finding different things to do in, Bos in the Boston area, as I waited for them to come. So to that end, I tested out my new toy on a gaggle of raiders in the happening Hangman's Alley. As the gun instructed, as soon as I opened the door, I began spraying and praying, also narrowly dodging a grenade but once the dust had settled, I had a new base of operations. As this was a central location for me to come back to, it was very nice to have Hangman's Alley. Also levelling up, putting a point into Commando for better damage with Spray and Pay. By now, also having two points in Sneak, so with the silencer, it was now even more deadly. From there, I ran over to the USS Riptide, where I dispatched even more raiders, definitely not almost dying in the process. Here also being where I thought it would be the best idea to grab the power armor off the suited raider, and take it back to my power arm at the police station. So for some reason I thought this was a great idea, so I spent 8 minutes being over encumbered, punching my way all the way back to the, the police station. And I can tell you now, I never use the armour at any point in the run whatsoever, so this will be pointless. As I didn't even do anything with the rubberhead here, I just turned around and ran back to Diamond City. Sometimes my genius is... it's almost frightening. So reaching Diamond City, the reason for my journey beca became apparent. As to go through the arc jet with Mr. Spaceman, I would need the hacker perk, which I didn't already have, so completing the Jewel of the Commonwealth quest, speaking to Ellie, also stealing Kellogg's house key, thinking that would be a, I'd be able to get into the secret a bit early, but thanks to Bethesda, the bomb wasn't even there. I then spoke with the deranged scientist, bought her a cloak for a gland, and she gave me some money, and a little XP. None of this levelling me up however, I returned to Hangman's Alley, and tried a new tactic of spamming shelves. Speedrun Carpal Tunnel Syndrome, but it was all worth it, as I leveled up, taking the hacker perk, and I returned to the police station. Oh, I then followed Dance all the way to Archer, him killing all the hostiles in our path. I once again want to reiterate, I see saving Nick as the start of the main quest, so doing this is not it. It's that, that doesn't end up meaning much in the future anyway, but I will get to that later. So reaching Archer, I opened the door with my expert hacking skill, and Dance decided he was taking a sabbatical today, as the synths rushed me, and I was taken down. Also annoying, how long it took me to open the goddamn door, as, as the terminals make me want to die. I suppose I got that wish. So, repeating myself again, I returned to the door. This time, thankfully, it didn't take as long to open, and I was not taking any chances to dance, so I jacked myself full of jet, equipped spray and pay, and I loaded on these toasters, killing them all. Thankfully, my efforts were rewarded with a new disease, that being infection, the one that does periodic damage. So the first disease that actually put a damper on the run. Now uh, rather than the other survival things that I was just incompetent in, the game then turned into a walking sim for a while as we slowly waddled behind Dance. As we made our way to the reactor room, I powered it up, shut the doors to the control room and watched Dance be showered with simps. Doing this brought me much joy, as I would have gladly continued doing it forever and ever, but the inspection kept spreading and I would have eventually run out of stim packs, getting myself stuck down there until I died. So I reluctantly turned on the microwave Afterwards reaped the rewards collecting over 300 fusion cells. So I said it was a good call. I woke Dance 
and we collected the deep range transmitter. He then rewarded me with the righteous authority. I then did a whole load of fisting on my way back to the police station. Finally reaching it, I joined up with the Brotherhood and took my power hammer back to Angler's Alley, which is where it stayed. I then went back to Diamond Sea, saw a man get married to a robot, slept in the dugout in once more, collecting yet another disease, that of lethargy, having four out of the seven diseases I needed, so the run was looking up for now. Now being right, I turned what I said earlier on its head, as I saw it being nigh impossible to get all the diseases, and then keep them, as all they did was wait around, not sleeping, just sitting, waiting for time to pass as I was waiting for the vendors to restock uh, and I lost infection. So with my new knowledge of this, I thought for a while I, and I decided I did want to continue the run, even though it was clearly going to be very hard if not impossible to get all the diseases at once, let alone keep them. So I changed the run to beating Fallout 4 while collecting all the diseases so I had them by the end. This now being what the run had turned into as I didn't want to scrap the whole video. So not starting the main quest, so I turned around and said I'm going to start the main quest and I headed for Park Street Station. The trigger men in the station were actually surprisingly easy to get through as spray and prey ripped through them very easily, creating many a Picasso painting. Another reason for my motive for coming down here also being I need to collect a lot of 45 ammo for spray and prey as most of the trigger men use some machine guns so I could collect lots and lots of ammo down here. Also using my sneak ability as I was able to make it to Nick very easily as none of the trigger men saw me coming. Dino going down just as all the others had. Releasing Nick, we both made it to Skinny, where I took every dog I could possibly find, including a stealth boy. I snuck up around back of them, and I let all hell out, and they died in a blaze of fire. Telling Nick I would meet him back at his office, I did so, telling him of the cereal brand, who stole my son. The button spawning in, I ransacked his house, gave dog meat a cigar, as he looked like he wanted a whiff. I began following him, on our way to have breakfast, where we had some fun and games with some more rats and dogs. I thought that was fine. And then a Yaogwai popped his head out to say hello. I dealt with him fairly quickly and efficiently, which was a surprise, but a welcome one. Then followed the trail behind Dogmeat as he led me to Fort Hagen. I made a precautionary save outside, and I say, thank Christ I did, as I was ripped to shreds by the synths. More times than I would like to admit, I did eventually get down to the second level, where I thought, It'd be a great idea to use my 10mm pistol and not spray and pray, and as this was survival, I got rushed by a synth and whacked to death, putting me back to bed. Trying this once more, with the use of Fort Hagen's tight corridors and rooms, I was able to take out the synths on the first floor. I also collected a much better 10mm pistol, as it was both suppressed and automatic. Making it down to the second level this time, I was not taking any chances, I went back outside to save. Going back inside, I destroyed the synths and the turret with my new gun, so that was pointless, but Better safe than sorry. This also proved my new gun to be very, very useful. By now I'd also gained back infection, so it was a race against the clock to kill Kellogg before I ran out of healing items. Luckily, the rest of the fort was a cakewalk, as with, with some precaution and sneaking, it allowed me to kill all the toasters in the way. I also made sure to collect the fat man in the armory to help me persuade Kellogg. Reaching him, I shot my fat man, him somehow surviving. Better yet, he very, very quickly killed me. The second time, I shot my fat man, pumped myself full of drugs, Using my 10mm to finish the job. He done it! Break up, ripping apart his brain, I left the fort and witnessed the Brotherhood's entry into the Commonwealth, this making me very happy, as I was one step closer to making my life much easier. Running da back to Diamond City was a breeze. No issues at all, but this man, who I've never seen before, came out of the bushes and killed me in one shot. Thank you, Todd Howard. Luckily, I'd made a precautionary save for just this eventuality from within Fort Hagen. So running back again, I made sure to avoid that area and aim for Vault 81, where I saved, breathing a sigh of relief, and continued on my way to Diamond City. Nick then told me I needed to go to a good neighbor, but instead, I went to the police station, where I took a ride in the Fred Member dance. After listening to Maxon's boring speech, I met up with all the important Brotherhood members, collecting my own set of power armor, as I thought I'd probably need it for what was about to go down. Speaking with Maxon, he pointed me in the direction of my target. That being an island full of big green boys. Thankfully being able to use my minigun on the vert bird, I shot down the behemoth before even landing. Using the minigun to kill most of the normal mutants with ease, finishing the stragglers off with spray and prey. Just before entering I also realised I was only one disease short of collecting them all, giving me hope for the future of the run. Getting inside, I commenced a large scale game of cat and mouse as I snuck between the rooms, killing the mutants if they saw me. I was mostly healing my constant damage reduction from the infection, getting a dance to do all the work for me, by now also being lethally low on 45 ammo, as I'd wasted most of it in Fort Hagen. I needed to dance now more than ever. The basement of the fort was no different, as I sick dance on most of the mutants, 
also narrowly avoiding the missiles from one, but with well placed grenades he took a dirt nap. Working together we finished off the last mutant, and, and I took all what was worth to sell to Tegan for some more ammo, only having to wade through a large body of water on my way back to the Pribbon. And after all that I collected, I gained a grand total of a hundred bullets. But for now that was nothing, as my main problem was not even disease related, as I was now slowly dying of dehydration, and with the lack of water on the Pridwin, I was not doing very well. With my, with my dwindling Stimpak supplies, I had, to, I had to get water quick, and so as I needed to go there anyway, I headed for good neighbour. And I will also touch on my reasoning for siding with the Brotherhood here, as I neglected to say why earlier. To be sure, it's the Vertibird signal grenades. The holy goddamn trinity for a survival playthrough. He's undoubtedly making my life a million times easier, as they acted as fast travel allowing me to go anywhere on the map as long as I had discovered it. The mission for Fort Strong being the keys to unlocking it. Now with my access to flight, I dropped down to the airport, I've got a bird to take me to good neighbour. Well, I know I just picked up Vert Birds as a nice new f as a system for fast travel, but Bethesda is Bethesda, and the Vert Bird mechanics aren't the best, as it decided to drop me off inside a building, glitching me in place. Luckily, I was able to w escape wiggling out, but not so luckily, I was in a mutant hotspot. I was able to jump down to Good Neighbor, but but the super mutants followed me down there. And then I got caught in a grenade explosion. Not even from one of the bloody super mutants, it came from a random NPC taking me back to the Bridwin. Returning to Good Neighbor, this time by way of Park Street Station, so the Vertibird would actually land in a safe place, so I had no grenade problems. But I did blow Finn's head off. I then collected water through both legal and illegal means, quenching my thirst. Meeting up with Dr. Amari, I had a fun time with Mr. Cornflake's memories. And with that pain over, I was out, and in the nick of time as well, as I was still taking infection damage during that entire time, so I was just able to get a stim pack off moments before I would have died. Stopping off at Hotel Rexford to save, I saw the Vault Tech rep and I told him to go to Sanctuary. The only reason I brought this up, however, is to, was because of Dance's response. Oh, that thing shouldn't be living anywhere. It should be put out of its misery. But I knew he would get a rude awakening later, so I didn't dwell on it, and I went to bed. But I was awoken by a rude message, as I now only had four diseases, which was not very good, as my plan was to keep all the diseases, this being my first sign of many that the run was a bust. But for now, I continued on, now going round to the railroad, as I knew I would need the train enthusiasts for later to decode the chip. So I thought, well I might as well get it out of the way now as I'm in the neighbourhood, as my charisma skill was abysmal and, I, and there was no way I was going to kill them, so I had to do their quest. So getting down there, I guess their secret code, I met up with them and agreed to meet Deacon near Circum Joe's. I then walked across the river to the airport, summoned my transportation, flew over to Archer and me and Dance made our way to Deacon. But Dance decided it's a good day for hunting, as he shot a load of radstags. That not being all that bad, but it startled some nearby gunners. And Deacon, them all getting into a slight scuffle. This doesn't seem that bad, does it? You'd probably wonder why I brought it up at all. Other than the fact that it completely glitched out Deacon, and I had no way of starting the quest. No matter how many times I tried to speak with him, and the fact that he was in the right area, he only ever said, <coughs> Got a few things to take care of. Over. And over. Again. I let out my anger by repeatedly showering him with bullets, with my ability to not be bothered to just fly back. I chose the second best option, using the fat man I'd used on Kellogg to blow us all up. Giving up with that for now, I flew to Diamond Sea, stole a whole bunch of water, saved the game, and it was now time for me to make a fun time in the glowing sea. Which actually went fairly well, as I had mapped out a route for me to use, with the beds where I could save on my way. Firstly, running from Diamond City, stopping off at the marina, where I saved and then kept going past the mile lurks that cut a bend to Somerville Place, where once again I saved. This had been the last place I could save before entering the Glowing Sea. The trek to the crater was fairly easy. It went off without a hitch except from the, except from some red scorpions that saw me. But Dance took one for the team and fought them off. I then ran around the top of the cliffs to avoid the death claw, managing to sneak into Virgil's cave with no problem. The big green man told me I needed a course chip, so that was now my focus. The way back was no trouble, as I was able to summon a vert bird in the glowing sea, and he took me straight back to Hammond's Alley, where I saved my progress. Still sadly not having gained any more diseases back on this excursion, I pushed forward nonetheless, 
collecting Nick and we made our way to Green Tech, where he became a beast pushing forward into the gunfire. I only had to pick off the stragglers. Then we made it to the missile one. This was painful, but I did it all again. And yet better yet, I managed to do it on my second try. You might be wondering why there is no footage of it. And that is because of my dumbass not hitting the record button, as I don't film all the footage in one go most of the time. Instead, you are going to get a great reenactment of what happened in Green Tech. The first level went mostly the same, but when it came to the Missile Man, I took it more seriously and sent Nick to deal with him. And yes, Nick did really take them out, but I guess you're just going to have to take my word for it. And the course went down to my own ability to fire a new. <laughs> So with that all done, I left the averted bird, and to add insult to injury, I had lost yet another disease, making this run even more pointless. As to not waste your time pedaling out this video any longer, I was able to complete tradecraft as Deacon actually wanted to work this time, decoded the Corsa chip, and here is where the run finally died. Going back to Virgil was simple enough, I was able to use the averted bird into the glowing sea. It was as I was leaving the glowing sea, the game crashed for no reason. And yes, I did try multiple times, multiple different ways, not, not a single one working. And I literally never have trouble with Fallout 4 crashing, so I can say I was very confused. But at the end of the day, I saw this as a divine strike from Todd Howard himself, and I decided to stop it here. There was no way to proceed, and nothing else I could do. But to be fair, the run was practically bust from the moment I saved Nick without having all the diseases. So sadly, I have to say, it is not possible to beat Fallout 4 with every disease. The somber note aside, I am not against trying this again in the future, as if anyone is interested and knows of any way that I could possibly have all the diseases from the start, either with mods or with console commands, it would be very much so appreciated if you could leave a comment down below. But with all of that out of the way, I thank you for making it to the end, and if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye everybody. All of this just works.